Okay, I can see that we are live. Hi guys, welcome back to S4 Summit 2022. Um, and this time we're switching to English because we are joined by our partner Salesforce and I'm proud to introduce to you guys uh, our speakers. Uh, we have uh, Paolo Jorge Fernandez, we have Dragan Miocinovic and we have Nicholas Dierig. Hi guys, great to have you. And we are very pleased to um, introduce you to our S4 Summit family. Now, as you can see, the theme of the next presentation is what is new in service cloud and field service to grow lifelong customers. Now, uh, we have some time for your presentation. And once we are done with the presentation, I uh, should remind you guys that we have a Q&A session prepared. So if you have any questions, if there's anything during the presentation that catches you uh, or you want to ask some more about that, please be sure to leave your comments, uh, leave your questions in the comments. You can also send them to our email uh, and our mailbox at Facebook, and we will be sure to show them all to our speakers. So Paolo, Nicolas and Dragan, welcome to S4 Summit 2022. Thank you, Dorota. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the service call presentation at S4 Summit Poland. We have a fantastic agenda for today. Uh, we will be sharing some highlights on the latest innovations from service cloud and field service, and how it can help to grow lifelong customers and take customer engagement to the next level. Of course, we will be also showing several cool demos on some of the topics. My name is Paul Fernandes, and I have over 20 years experience in the CRM area. And this is my third year at Salesforce, working with our customers and partners in Poland and some other Eastern European countries. And I have the privilege to have with me today Dragan Miocinovic, a highly experienced solution engineer on Service Cloud. And today we have also with us uh, Nicolas Derry, a senior solution engineer that came from Slack and joined Salesforce Awana with this amazing acquisition of Slack by Salesforce. Before we dive in, I want to thank you. Thank you to the Salesforce organization for the invitation and for having us. And thank you to all our audience, partners, and customers for your time today and for being the trailblazers in your organizations and companies. I just want to give a quick reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and customers should base their purchasing decisions on products and services that are currently available. So let's start. Service Cloud is the biggest Salesforce cloud, thanks to our customers and partners. And Salesforce keeps investing to expand Service Cloud as the most connected and complete platform across four main pillars. Modernization of customer service experiences, transformation and digitalization of the contact center, optimization of field service operations, and streamlining the employee service experience. During this presentation, we will be highlighting some of the service cloud innovations around these four main pillars. So let's start with the modernization of customer service. And why is modern customer service so important? Well, customers' expectations are high, you know that. And they expect to feel a personal connection when they interact with customer service and expect to have connected experiences with that company. This is important because if a company is able to use technology to provide a connected and personalized service at scale in a cost-effective way, the company will build a happy lifelong customer Base and these customers will prefer to do business with that company in the future. So it's about sustainability and profitability. And Service Cloud is the platform for a modern customer service to provide a connected and personalized service, either with the self service through portals, help centers, or applications, or with the artificial intelligence assisted conversations using Einstein bots or Einstein for service in digital channels such as chat, SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, 
or even voice as a new digital channel, or with the service agent assisted, where the customer can navigate and be transferred in a connected way between the different channels and experiences, feeling always a personalized service, including the field if needed. And across all these interactions, the automation and orchestration of the business processes are crucial to scale and provide a connected customer experience. So let's take a look on some of these new updates and innovations that Service Cloud brings to our customers. Let's start by some exciting news around self-service. Starting uh, with the December release, self-service will include Salesforce content management system. This will be again changing for self-service. Because with Salesforce CMS, it will include features such as the ability to create, organize, publish, versioning, and archive content, the ability to schedule content, and the ability to provide persona-based access controls to content. So it will really transform and bring new possibilities for delightful content to the, the customers. Salesforce a CMS will be including self-service with the same price. Yes, that's right. A much more powerful experience cloud for customers, communities, and self-service without additional costs. Now let's take a look into some of the latest digital engagement news. With digital engagement native to Service Cloud, it was already possible to provide service to customers on the channel of their preference. But with the new digital engagement stack, it will allow new exciting features such as persistent conversations for messaging in app and web. And it is, uh, and it is expected to be available in this summer release. With persistent conversations, Customers can engage in continuous conversations with a company that synchronizes across websites and mobile devices. And whenever a customer returns to a company website or app, they can see their past conversations, allowing customers to pick up a conversation right where they left off. And customers no longer need to keep a browser or app open in order to keep a conversation. They will be notified once a response came uh, in from, a, uh, from an agent. And it was built with security and privacy in mind to meet the stringent requirements of industries such as financial and healthcare with support for field masking and encrypted communications. And Steinbot is another area of strong growth and investment. And with the recent, recent releases, there are many great functionalities and the upcoming innovations are really impressive. And Steinbots currently already support more than 100 languages, including Polish, as you know, uh, for many based conversations. And for free text using natural language processing, it already supports 17 languages and this number of languages is expected to grow even faster with the upcoming new intent model uh, that is being built for Einstein bots. Another cool feature in Pilot uh, is to support third-party NLP engines that allows the support of addi additional languages also. And with features like multilingual bots, where you can build one single bot to handle multiple languages. It's a huge advantage for companies that serve customers in several countries and languages. Also, with Einstein Bots API now in beta, the use cases for Einstein Bots can be expanded by integrating the bots in, into external systems and third party digital channels. And Sunbots, as you know, are hyper compliant by properly handling sensitive health and medical data, including protected health information. And the upcoming summer release will have also the messaging structure content. 
allowing agents and bots to push interactive and rich experiences, such as images, menus, forms, and payments, to enable more engaging conversations, and unlo unlocking new use cases like payments and authentication or conversational commerce scenarios between agents, bots, and customers. So a lot of things happening in this area. Salesforce flows are probably one of the most important features of Salesforce platform leveraged by Service Cloud. And the evolution of the Salesforce flows is being impressive. But up to now, for more complex business processes, admins have to stitch multi-departmental and multi-user processes together using a combination of flows, process builder, and custom Apex code. But now, Orchestrator solves this by giving admins a low-code point-and-click interface to build parallel work streams with multiple users, multi-steps, and multi-stages. Orchestrator will streamline complex business processes by transforming it into coordinate collections of guided experiences and backend actions. And Orchestrator will allow all existing Salesforce flows to be reused. That's really important. As an example, think of submitting a return. A Salesforce flow is good to submit the return request. But this is only part of the business process. So Salesforce Orchestrator is great for the full end-to-end -end return business process, such as initiating the return request, have the warehouse confirmation of returned product reception, processing the refund, and sending a customer survey, for example. Another interesting area is the Salesforce feedback management. With it, it's possible to automate the customer's feedback collection and surveys and define those important interactions where customer feedback is more important to the business. This helps to better track how customer relationships evolve over time. What's truly powerful about Salesforce feedback management is the ability to act on it. You can derive actionable insights that improve experiences, like reopening a case if the score is low, to help improve the, and sustain customer relationships. Salesforce feedback management truly unifies feedback data with everything else we know about the customer or employee. It can pull Salesforce data into questions, as well map individual responses right back into Salesforce. And all it is built natively on Salesforce. And Service Cloud is expanding to support the IT service management best practices. And it started last year with incident management features built in, and it will, it will be evolving in upcoming releases. This gives the ability to deal with cases in mass out of the box, applying the ITSM approach. For example, if there is a huge number of customers complaining about the same issue, it will be possible to tie all of the, those cases to a single incident, making it easier to track and manage the issue that is impacting a large number of customers, and then use the problem object for a structured approach, approach to investigate and identify the root cause. And then a change request can be created to outline the steps to ensure that the issue is resolved. For these complex incident or cases, the collaboration between experts from different teams, such as DevOps, engineering, production, etc., to diagnose the root cause can be critical. And that's where a collaborative approach with Slack can come into play for service. By using Service Cloud and Slack for incident management or case management, you can streamline incident resolution by being able to instantly find the right experts. This is called incident or case swarming. 
You can also use Slack to broadcast real-time status updates to internal teams and stakeholders. That way, the service agents are aware about the latest details to provide a proper status update to customers. So let's take a look how Slack and Service Cloud can work together. Over to you, Nick. So, yeah, I'm just going to show some simple but effective ways that Slack can currently be integrated with Service Cloud to solve issues faster. So I'm going to be doing a really quick demo, and I'm going to be playing the role of Michael Glover, who is a customer support manager for a fictional company. So you can see over on the left on the channel sidebar, there are channels for each of the main responsibilities that Michael has. There is a channel made for the process of automatic alerting for tickets. There's a channel to coordinate the actual team of support agents. But actually, there's a notification here that I've been mentioned directly for the support escalations channel. So I'm going to prioritize this channel and look into it. So I've been mentioned by the Service Cloud integration. The way this works is on Service Cloud side, as shown in the previous slides, the agent could actually push the case from Service Cloud to Slack to appear as a message in a channel. So this message has come in with a custom summary from the support agents letting me know what's happened. And also it's tagged me directly in Slack because I've been nominated to be the case warm manager in this particular case. But if you actually look at the stats here and looking at it from a manager perspective, I can actually see quite a lot of high level information that would be useful to actually decide what to do to escalate this priority case. So of course I have the summary which explains that the issue is a persistent cloud storage error. And it also has other information such as the priority of the case being high. Of course, this is all coming straight from the case in service cloud. It shows me who the case owner or the agent is on Slack side. So that's Daniel. So I could actually message him in Slack directly if I want to. And of course, it shows what the customer and also things like the amount of spend they have with us. And what's necessary, uh, what's interesting here is it's not actually necessarily needed for me to go into Service Cloud and check it there. I could actually potentially get most of the information I need just from this message, which was posted by the Service Cloud integration. So what I can do now is look into starting a case form to get some cross-functional partners here to help me solve this priority issue. But one issue I'm facing now is that as a manager, I actually don't know that much about cloud storage. But what I can do is use the power of Slack search to help me out in this case. So I can go up to the search bar. Let's go ahead and do some searching cloud storage. Let's do a super general search. So what you'll see is Slack does bring up a variety of messages. You can see there's some conversations in the past about similar issues with cloud storage. That would be quite useful to reference. But what's interesting is up here, and if I expand this, you can actually see that a message from Quip has been posted. So there is a Quip integration to Slack, and it allows, among other things, Quip documents to be posted into a channel. And so because this was posted into the channel, I can actually essentially search Quip directly from Slack. So there's this idea we talk about where the more you actually integrate your apps into Slack, Slack becomes that kind of central hub to actually view data from all of your integrations in one place. So it can be so, become super handy and useful. So this Quip document has quite a lot of information about cloud storage that I could look into, so that's great. But Slack search is much more than just messages. It also brings up things across the whole workspace, so files, channels, and even people. So what I can do is go on to files, and it's actually brought up a file that is a video clip that was posted in a channel. And when you upload video clips to Slack, we automatically take the audio and we create an automatic text transcript. So this effectively allows you to search for part of a video. So apparently cloud storage was mentioned in this video. And so I can go to the timestamp and actually watch this video and get some insight that might help me out. You can of course search through channels. So this has brought up a feature channel for cloud storage. So I could probably ask here if I can't find any of our answers at the moment. And you can also search people. 
So what this is doing is actually bringing up keywords from someone's Slack profile. So we can see here that Anya Weber actually specializes in cloud storage. So she's likely my subject matter expert. I need to help me escalate this case. So that's brilliant. I'm going to go back to the support escalations channel. Um, what I'm going to do is start a case swarm. So firstly, I'm just going to put the eye emoji on this message. Just to quickly show everyone else that I'm looking into it, so there's no duplicated effort of multiple people looking into this at once. And then I can start a thread by just hovering over and creating a thread. So we recommend that everyone uses threads to keep the context of that conversation happening within that message so that you could have multiple cases being discussed in the main part of the channel with each one having a nice structure to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just talk to Anya and ask her if she could look into this. And Anya has responded, so that's great that she's looking into it. What I can also do in this particular case is I can hover over Anya's profile and I can actually start a huddle. So a huddle is a native feature in Slack. It creates a simple audio bridge between a user or it can actually do it in a channel as well for multiple people to join. So if this was a critical case that needed immediate help, it might be quicker to actually do it over an audio bridge. But for now, I can just reply. OK, so great. Anya has actually confirmed that a fix has been run and the customer can actually try installing the issue again and hopefully the cloud storage error won't appear again. So what I can do at this particular point is essentially close the loop by posting this response back into Service Cloud. And to do this, I can just hover over the message and I can press the Add to Service Cloud. And this will just put this data, this message data back into the case in Service Cloud. The agent will see it and they can reply to the actual customer from there. So with these integrations with Salesforce in particular, they're bi-directional. So data can be pushed into Slack, but of course data can be pushed out of Slack back into Salesforce. So you have that much richer ecosystem. What I can also do is if Anya mentions something that's particularly useful to reference later on, for example, this message, I can again go on the hover actions and then I could actually create a quip document directly from this message data too. So maybe if someone's having a similar issue in the future, they could reference a quick quip document and save them a little bit of time. So that was just a super quick demo. That's all I want to show for now. I think it's worth mentioning that there are a whole range of new Salesforce integrations coming out for Slack in the coming months. There's also a new version of Service Cloud coming out soon that has more capabilities around case swarming. So do look out for that. But I hope this was an interesting flavor of how Slack and Salesforce are modernizing customer service. So handing it back to Paolo. Thank you, Nick, for this great demo. OK, we have seen that collaboration is important for a modern customer service. But why is this important? Because it saves time and improves results. And for saving precious service agent time, we can leverage and sign for service. To automate, to automate the most repeat, repetitive or most common tasks and free up agent time for a more personalized customer service by providing the right information in context. And Sign for Service has several functionalities that are language agnostic, such as Einstein case classification or Einstein case routing or Einstein case wrap up. They can, they can be used in Polish or any other language. I will hand over now to Dragon for a cool demo on Einstein for service. Over to you, Dragon. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Yeah, so uh, basically, the, when, you, when you think about the future of the service, uh, then uh, um, definitely beside the focus on personal customer support and customer centricity, uh, there is a, a lot of discussion about automation, about deflection, and so on. And that's the area where uh, absolutely the Einstein, this is our artificial intelligence platform, is coming into the game. Uh, 
um, Paolo mentioned already there are different ways uh, of, on this platform how we can help the agents and customers from Einstein bots via case classification, case wrap up, uh, um, uh, a case uh, the the chat uh, auto replies, uh, next best action. So there are different ways of uh, having these Einstein features. What I will show you now is the one of the features that really changed uh, a lot of things in the um, let's say routing of the cases. If you would ask me, let's say a year and a half or two years ago, uh, shall we support email as a customer channel? I would say probably no, because it's unstructured data. Just go to the web forms or try somehow to get the structure, uh, structured information. But today, so if the customer, like we see here, so needs a kind of help regarding turbine repair and sends uh, this to certain support address, uh, then uh, typically what happens uh, in the uh, background is the, from this uh, um, email, the case uh, will be created. And when the case is created, uh, then the Einstein uh, takes the control and uh, does the prediction. So basically it evaluates all the historical data. So all the cases that you have. It's a purely machine uh, um, learning solution. So that means no natural language processing. It's a uh, language agnostic. It works on any language. And it will compare basically the content of your uh, historical data. And based on this, and of course, the model that Einstein built in the meantime, will make the prediction of, this, uh, of these fields. So what, we, what we'll see is, is, is basically that then this kind of uh, cases that, uh, that we just created. So they will be routed uh, through the omnichannel. And for those that still don't use the omnichannel, it's a really high recommendation for the contact center or for customer service that uh, agents make themselves available. And then based on their skills, um, based on their availability or capacity, the cases will be automatically routed to the, to the agent. So we'll see here. So what happens? Yeah. So what I'm doing is just I'm accepting this uh, uh, this case, and uh, now the the case will show on my on my screen. Uh, so where is now Einstein case classification coming into the game? So there are different possibilities. One is that you say, okay, I want a fully automated uh, case classification. That's exactly what many customers are are uh, doing. So if the Einstein is sure that the prediction is above certain threshold, you can say, okay, then just do the predictions. And based on this prediction and the field values, um, then uh, do the routing. Another possibility is to do it, let's say, more or manual or semi-automatic, where you still give the chance the agent to check, say, okay, I want to get the Einstein recommendation um, uh, fields. So I don't need to do it manually. So myself, but I will just use the capabilities of Einstein. And then again, Einstein is giving the, let's say, recommendation on the value of the field. And again, so if the Einstein is um, uh, pretty sure that this is the right value, so above certain threshold, then uh, it will uh, put the value. If not, then the agent will get uh, typically three options to select the field. So, and now I will accept this. And in this way, it helped me uh, to save the time. So to save uh, um, clicks, uh, let's say. So I didn't need manually to fill the, these fields. It can be also more fields, of course, uh, for this uh, classification, uh, but Einstein did it for me. The similar thing is with the case wrap up. So this is a kind of additional features, very similar to the case classification. When we close the case, typically the agents need to make some summary. What was the uh, topic? What was the customer issue? Was it successfully solved and so on? Is there any follow-up? So this kind of information that Einstein can also do for you or for the agents and then uh, do the case wrap up and uh, fill again uh, some summary fields uh, when uh, the case uh, is closed. So this was the uh, quick demo on the case classification. And um, just to mention, it's very, very simple to, to configure this. You just need to turn it on. Uh, it, there is no programming. You will select the fields that you want uh, to be predicted and then uh, uh, let the Einstein build its uh, model for the case classification prediction. 
So giving back to you, Paolo. Thank you, Dragon, for this great demo. Now, let's take a look at the second pillar of Service Cloud for growing lifelong customers. That is the digitalization and transformation of the contact center. And you know, the, the bar for contact centers is higher than ever. The customers expect complex problems to be solved by talking to one single person over voice or over a messaging channel. And to meet these expectations, service leaders need new contact center technology to help them to personalize and connect service at scale in a cost-effective way. I will highlight some of the recent Service Cloud innovations for contact centers. Service Cloud Voice was launched one year ago that allows to handle voice as another digital channel. And it's already being used by over 600 customers, including some of the largest contact centers. And it keeps growing and expanding adding new telephony partners for service called voice, giving that way more options to our customers. Also, as already mentioned before, the new upcoming digital engagement platform will bring persistent messaging, rich content in messaging and bots, and other innovations for more efficient and scalable contact centers across use, uh, use cases. And as you know, contact center agents are still the most important asset. And that's why Service Cloud has now a complete solution for workforce engagement that allows to optimize staffing with a real-time view of case volumes and trends across channels. Service Cloud workforce engagement uses artificial intelligence to help service leaders to predict how many requests will come into the contact center and on which channels, including voice, email, web, chat, and other messaging channels. That way, service leaders can forecast and plan staffing needs, matching agents to work needs based on their skills, availability, and shift preferences. Agents have a single workspace where they can see their performance, manage their shifts, as well as real-time coaching and online, online training. I will hand over now to Dragon for a more detailed view on workforce uh, engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. So, uh, yeah, so when we talk about workforce engagement, uh, this is a pretty new solution that we introduced um, June last year. So we are now three releases in, with this new um, solution. And obviously, uh, it is coming in the context of the whole contact center support. So many of our customers were asking, hey, do you have the forecasting tools? Do you have the shift planning and so on? And with the workforce engagement, we have a really very modern tool. So that is uh, um, based on the machine learning, on the artificial intelligence. It's basically out of the box so that you can really predict your needs um, accurately with, um, let's say, intelligent forecasting. So what you see is a kind of uh, small simulation in the, in the background, but basically this uh, intelligent forecasting allows planners to seamlessly predict um, both volume and handle times for incoming work from different channels. So this could be case, this could be uh, messaging, uh, chats, uh, voice calls, or even you can, be, you can build a custom object in Salesforce and then uh, also make the forecasting on this. Um, uh, one, one thing is the very uh, uh, simple, uh, let's say, uh, um, creation, so no, no coding. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, with this graphical presentation, you can compare, you can see how accurate is your, uh, your forecast. So you, if, if, let's say, we assume that all these historical data uh, are already based in the, in the Salesforce, uh, then you can really do it uh, in the easy uh, way, and um, uh, it's um, you can adjust uh, adjust also certain models um, to the new situation, 
you can also select what you see also on the screen, a kind of, okay, I want to for a certain channel for the phone channel, I want to for all channels and so on. It's very, very convenient uh, tool for, uh, uh, for planning um, and uh, basically creating the uh, forecast. Uh, what we see on the next uh, slide is, is basically a topic related to the omnichannel. Uh, as you can assume, or as you know, uh, omnichannel is one of the key things in the customer service and especially in the contact center where the work is coming and then it will be routed to the right uh, skilled agent. And uh, if you consider just uh, taking the Excel sheets and so on, or uh, what I hear from customers that they have the managers there whole day just doing nothing else than, than forwarding left and right uh, emails and tasks to the specific agents, that's actually what can really help so that you can um, make the predictions. So at what time? Uh, what day, for what kind of job and what kind of channel you need the right uh, re uh, agents. And then, uh, obviously, you can um, uh, make that kind of balance, balance plan. Uh, what we did here, we uh, built a kind of uh, job profiles. So you can say, okay, I'm the agent, um, I'm um, for, responsible for the cases and chats, and then you can apply uh, this, uh, this profile uh, for uh, the omnichannel optimization. Um, so it's it's really very very convenient tool uh, to plan the omni-channel uh, omni-channel queues and omni-channel uh, assignments. Um, and uh, uh, last uh, part of this uh, small presentation for the workforce engagement is uh, related to the agents because um, the agent should be also happy and they should be also um, satisfied with that with the tool that they are using. So uh, it's not only covering the business needs, this uh, solution, but it's also giving possibilities uh, to, let's say, combine best of breed. So to give the chance to the agents also to, let's say, uh, especially if they work now from home to say, okay, for me it's more convenient this shift. Um, so kind of respecting the, the needs of the employees, but also uh, covering um, um, business, uh, business objectives. So, and, and at the end, uh, it's, um, let's say, increasing agent uh, happiness and employee engagement through, let's say, this convenience of usage with a, what we always say, human-centric approach for scheduling and uh, shift optimization. So, Paolo, giving back to you. Thank you, Dragon, for this detailed view on work workforce engagement. Now, let's take a look on the innovations for optimizing field service operations. Field service nowadays is much more than break and fix scenarios, spanning across industries and use cases such as installations, assets, preventive maintenance, upsell or cross sell scenarios and servitization use cases, such as when a company sells a product as a service. And Salesforce service is the most complete field service platform for all these use cases. Probably most of you already know field service, and although this slide is quite packed, it gives a good idea on the complete completeness of Salesforce field service. The leading scheduling and optimization engine that incorporates the Click software acquisition supports the most demanding use cases and industries. And the addition of virtual and remote tools, such as remote video and audio, gives the mobile workers and to the customers the highest level of effect effectiveness. And allowing customers to manage their appointments gives the best customer experience. And the mobile app, which is the key tool for mobile workers perform at their best, by having the right information about the customer and about the job, is packed of great features. And for some industries, such as utilities or energy, that are more asset-centric, all the features around asset management are crucial. And AI is playing an important role for automation, like parts recommendations or predictive job directions. And the innovations don't stop. For instance, the mobile lightning web components, 
will allow the extension of the mobile worker app within the industry or customer specific use cases. Another cool functionality is allowing customers to self-service for scheduling their field visit appointments. Appointment Assistant lets customers to control their agenda, allowing them to schedule, reschedule, or cancel appointments. So it really brings more convenience to customers and reduce call volumes at the contact center. And the Appointment Assistant, together with Digital Engagement, allows to automatically notify customers to remind them of the upcoming on-site visits and pre-arrival checklists and gives visibility of the mobile worker arrival times as well on the customer channel of choice such as email, SMS or WhatsApp. Giving these automated notifications in advance to customers reduces the no-shows. And the privacy of the mobile worker is also protected as it can give an approximate location and the link will expire after the on-site visit. Another cool feature is the visual remote assistant that allows service agents to deliver exceptional support remotely using real-time visual guidance with two-way video and audio and, and uh, can use markers and annotations in the video or image and can read barcodes with AI-powered OCR capability as well. And this is fully integrated into service clouds. All the existing customer and case information can be leveraged. And also the visual remote interaction can be stored and associated with the customer case. And visual remote assistant can be used not only for customer virtual support, but also for remote assistant for a mobile worker in the field that needs the advice of a second line expert or even in a virtual sales sales scenario where the virtual seller talks with customers with video and audio with all the information in context and even with screen co-browsing if needed. So let's take a look on it with a live demo. Over to you, Dragon. OK, um, thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see how the Visual Remote Assistant, one of nice new features, uh, is uh, working. Um, so um, if you would use the Visual Remote Assistant, you would have a kind of component uh, that you can add, for example, on your case layout. Um, you can send invitation by, via email or uh, via SMS. Um, and then you can choose also uh, kind of uh, what kind of type of sessions do you want. So do you want like a two ways video, video session and so on. And I will send now to uh, my mobile phone. So and we'll see what happens uh, when the um, SMS comes. So it should uh, uh, come here. So I'm the customer or technician or the sales guy. So then uh, they will actually... Uh, Click here, accept uh, the terms and conditions, allow, of course, the sharing of the screen. And now uh, we see, so we see on the one side the agent role, but also we see the, 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 the customer uh, or technician uh, screen. Typical case is that um, customer call, uh, customer service uh, does not know something how to configure, to turn on, turn off, uh, and so on. So in these kind of uh, situations, uh, it can be really helpful uh, without sending the technician on site. There is also a scenario when technician is on site, field service technician, and then needs more information about certain spare part uh, and how to... Um, how to repair it. Um, uh, one nice thing is that um, um, you see when I move the mouse and I can uh, draw on the on the screen. So then uh, you see on my screen as well on the mobile phone uh, what the agent is uh, drawing. 
Um, another um, great feature is to uh, make the snapshot, so a kind of photo. And then uh, for this photo, I can uh, make the drawing. Uh, I can change the uh, whatever colors uh, and uh, make uh, uh, one more and then share this information with the customer. So you see on the left side what uh, the customer or technician uh, sees. If I uh, click on this uh, blue button, then again, I'm in the, in the video, uh, video mode and uh, I can also uh, here uh, return to, uh, to video. Uh, with your communication. Yeah. So that's uh, one of the features. Another one uh, typically is uh, getting the barcode information either from the machine or from the spare part. So for this purpose, uh, you can uh, uh, make the photo of a uh, click here on the scan and uh, do the, the scanning of this. Uh, and then um, automatically machine learning. So you see the barcode uh, will be red, so blue cards and so on, something that I'm, I'm just using. Uh, you can, of course, imagine in the real life scenario that this could be a barcode on the spare part of the machine. And then you can go to this asset and uh, see all the details uh, that are necessary for the customer or the technician uh, for the repair. Uh, the great thing is that all this information will stay, um, let's say, saved so, so that next time also you can uh, um, show it or any other agent that uh, likes to see this information. So if, when I close the session, so what we just uh, uh, see, so I'm, uh, I'm exiting the session, then we'll see the summary of the session with all the information, screenshots and so on that we made. I can make the comment um, and uh, save it. Afterwards, uh, you can uh, check this in the history, in the visual history. So this information are stored and can be also evaluated in the, in the later point in time. Um, so just to uh, summarize, uh, very nice tool, uh, visual communication on the one side to fast help the customers, but also on the other side to save the cost of sending technician for the small things when you can uh, do uh, this uh, as well on the, um, uh, the, through the video communication. Yeah. So Paolo, going back to you, or shall we show the, um, uh, the uh, work plans? Uh, you can show the work plans if you want. Okay, good. Yeah, we, we planned also one more uh, thing to show in, uh, in uh, this scenario. And uh, this is the creation of the work plans. Uh, this is a relatively new feature. Um, let's say, couple, I think two releases, it's, it's, uh, two releases, it's a GA. Uh, so basically, uh, when you go uh, on the case and when you create the, uh, the work order, you have the ability to make a kind of checklist you know, for the, um, for the technician that is going on site. So I will just say turbine repair requir required. We, I have a certain uh, work type. This is a battery replacement and I'm creating the work order. So when I create a work order, as you know, the work order is for the field service is our main container. So that describes what shall be done on site, uh, what kind of actions do we need to do and so on. And I'm clicking now on the work order and we'll see on the, on the, the, the layout of the work order. I see the asset details. Um, I see the products that are required. I see also the Einstein feature that is kind of doing a recommendation, kind of next best action. Say, hey, you can add also to uh, this uh, work order battery backup because again, on the historical data, in a similar situation, the battery backup uh, was added. Uh, but what, what I want to, to show is uh, definitely the work plans. We see we have a two work plans. One is the health and safety uh, check-in work plan. And another one is really a work-related uh, work plan. So how do you make the work plans? So basically, I uh, prepared uh, some kind of work plan template. So where I define what kind of actions are part of this uh, work plan. And then... I also configure the rule. So, so in which case the work plan uh, will be applied. So this could be according to the work type, uh, but this could be also according to the asset or even the service territory that you say, okay, this is only for the Warsaw region 
and uh, this is only for the wind turbine. So you can really restrict end of work plants. And then uh, they will be automatically added. It's one of the really lovely features uh, for the warranties, for the maintenance. Uh, when the technicians are going, they have then the certain checklists. Uh, and then um, obviously when you uh, do the planning of this, uh, um, let's say when you get the candidates for this and the technician is going on site and in the mobile uh, offline uh, app, uh, you, can, uh, you can also uh, simply conduct this step-by-step, -step, this, uh, these work plans. Now the system is looking for the best candidates. Let's schedule this uh, to the Alan Reed, and then we'll see uh, what uh, Alan is uh, uh, doing. Um, so Alan is, will get this information. We'll see on the Wednesday, uh, and um, and uh, in this turbine repair requirements, we'll see that uh, there are work plans as well. I will make it a little bit bigger. So on the work plans, I can go to the health and saf uh, safety uh, checklist so and then go step by step you see these small blue things uh, uh, here so that means that are also follow up steps so we are able to connect these work plans with the lightning flows so if you say okay i'm um, uh, clicking on certain checkbox then it can conduct um, some additional steps or some uh, additional flows. So, and then uh, obviously you go on the tree and say, okay, I'm completing this and uh, you go step by step uh, uh, to the next one. The nice thing is that this kind of uh, availability, 20% is done, is also in the live system on the dispatcher side or on the service agent side automatically visible. And all this information will be definitely stored also in the service report. Uh, so the, the customer, but also your HR or billing uh, department can get this information for uh, closing this uh, work code. So giving back to you, Paolo. Thank you, Dragon, for this amazing demo. Now we'll, we'll look at the fourth and last service called Pillar. And guess what? For great customer experience, Employee experience is as important as it is customer experience. So let's take a look on some highlights in this important topic. It will be quite quick because we are reaching the end of our presentation. Um, but uh, that's why the do the importance of employee experience that Salesforce launched last year, the IT service center and the HR service center. It allows to deliver fast easy to use employee service experiences. The employee will have a single console called the employee workspace with an embedded employee concierge and all of it work together to deliver seamless employee experiences. The employee workspace is built on experience cloud and can centralize what the employee needs to do his work, such as employee profiles, personalized articles and communications or company announcements have the application workspace for launching the Salesforce applications or third-party applications with a single sign-on, and much more. And the employee workspace with user interface can be uh, customized with low-code and drag-and-drop with a familiar experience called tools, and can be made available in a mobile app with mobile ex, uh, publisher. And with the embedded employee concierge, employees can use Knowledge Search to find what they need fast. And if self-service is not enough, employees can log a ticket directly from employee concierge and get full visibility of the ticket status and evolution. Looking more detail at IT Service Center, IT Service Center allows to manage the endpoints such as laptops or PCs with a partnership with Tanium and implements ETL best practices. For example, for an IT issue such as the Zoom app is not working, the employee can create a ticket and the IT agent will be able through the endpoint management to see in real time the software versions and, and service running on the employee laptop. And we will be able to push in real time software updates, stop and restart services, ensure that the devices are secure and compliant, etc. And if the issue was a, a world version of the Zoom software, then the IT service agent can 
proactively verify if there, is, there are more endpoints with the same older software version and push the software update to all the other computers even before any other ticket is open. And with the, the HR service center, companies can streamline and automate those complex multi-step HR processes. It, onboarding is a good example of a multi-step uh, process that sits across multiple systems. With HR Service Center, employees can have a single place to go and complete onboarding uh, actions, setting up direct deposits or applying for a corporate credit card. Each action on this list is powered by workflow that automates the process and can integrate the HR backend systems such as Workday. For HR questions and issues, such as I need to report a sick leave or change my home address, or I, I have lost my access security badge, if they are resolved through a self-service knowledge article recommended by employee concierge, the employee can open a case and then a HR specialist will be able to solve it or route it to the appropriate team with the HR service center. Well, and with this, we, we, are, we are finishing the presentation part, we, and we can start now the Q&A part. OK, so okay. I'm joining you guys, and I will also add Jagan to our stream. OK, we are all uh, visible right now. So we have some questions. Uh, so we have some questions to show you guys on the screen. The first one is, can scheduler schedule a visit directly for chatbot? Can scheduler schedule, schedule a visit directly for that? So there is a possibility that you schedule via chatbot, but there is also possibility to use the lightning scheduler. So there are two different uh, solutions. So uh, the, the bot can access to the lightning scheduler and then schedule the, uh, the, the visit. Um, this is one, one option. Another one is definitely more field service related that is probably a little bit more complex. It's not only just getting the slots, but it's based also on the full set of the work rules, on the aid skills of the technician and so on. But this is another option. Okay, and there is another one. I'll just remind our viewers if you have any questions. We still have about three minutes left, so be sure to leave uh, your question in the comment. And the question that we have out here is, is Visual Remote Assistant on a separate license? Does it require yeah. a separate license? Maybe, Paolo, you can pick this up. Yeah, I'll take this one. So, yes, so Visual Remote Assistant is an add-on product for field service, um, which uh, requires a license for each uh, agent user agent that will be providing the support. Okay, and it looks like these are all the questions that our viewers have to you. So you pretty much explained all the, all the new stuff uh, quite thoroughly. So thank you so much, Paolo, Nicolas, and Dragan. Thank you so much for joining us on the S4 Summit 2022. And we really hope that this was our first, but not the last meeting that we will have uh, on our summits. Thank you so much once again. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Have a good day. Have a good day. Yeah, See you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.